<laughs> I've got a, I've got an armband that they give us at church. It's first, it's uh, First Thessalonians five eleven. It basically it paraphrases. It says, "Encourage one another." I wish all of y'all could have one, so y'all could <laughs> encourage me on this right here. But y'all just, y'all, y'all just bear with me, and we get through it. Uh, as president of the board of trustees, I call this seventy fourth annual meeting at, of the members of the Wiregrass Electric Corporate to order and welcome each one of y'all. The first order of business is to determine a quorum. The bylaws of the corporation stipulate 3% of the members are required to re register in order for the business to be conducted. The total number of members is 16,482. With 3% needed for a quorum, 495 would be that 3%. It is confirmed that the registration for this meeting is 1,990, so we've got plenty. So. This including those who registered here as well as those who registered by mail. A quorum is reached and we can conduct business of this quorum. So I'd like for you, I'd like to introduce our board right now. Uh, I'm Kip Justice, I'm District 6. The Vice President is Danny McNeil and he is District 4. Secretary is Deborah Eubanks Baxley from District 1. Donna Parish, District 2, John Clark Jr., District 3, Tracy Reader, <coughs> District 5, Donald Ray Wilkes, <coughs> District 7, Greg McCullough, District 8, and Nolan Laird, <laughs> District 9. We've also, we've only had one contested election this time in the uh, Brad Morris, Brad, Brad Morris is running against Danny McNeil, so that, that's the, I, I just wanted y'all to see who he was, <laughs> so, okay. At this time, the agenda list, the reading of the, the agenda list, the reading of the no, notice of meeting. This notice was mailed to each member of the cooperative with the annual package. If you would like to waive the reading of the notice of the minutes, can I hear a motion? Can I hear a second? All in favor? Aye. All opposed? No. All right. The reading of the disposition of the 2012 annual meeting minutes. The next on the agenda is the, if you would like to waive the reading of the minutes, I would need a motion and a second also. You make a motion. And I need a second. All in favor? All opposed? Pass. <laughs> All right, now I get to turn the, <laughs> the meeting back over to Brad, but I really appreciate all y'all coming. Thank you, Kip. Um, <coughs> each year, our cooperative is audited uh, by an accredited accounting firm to assure that Wiregrass Electric Cooperative is in compliance with the Rural Utility Services. Uh, Jackson Thornton has been uh, our independent auditor for, for many years now, and Ed Williamson with Jackson Thornton is here to give the independent financial auditor's report. Ed, please come forward. Thanks, Brad. We were uh, engaged to perform the financial statement audit of the cooperative, and it was for the year ended April 30th, 2013. So the numbers I talk about and the report that I talk about was for the fiscal year ended April 30th, 2013. And we issued a clean or an unqualified opinion on the financial statements, and it's the highest form of assurance that we can give you on those financial statements. Also, we always issue a report on internal <coughs> controls and compliance. That was also a clean report, no issues there with the internal controls of the cooperative or in no compliance issues with loan covenants or anything of that nature. Uh, just a few things I was going to go through on the financial statements. Assets, the total assets uh, of the cooperative. We're just over 97 million as of April 30th, 2013. The plant 
uh, the outside plant, the poles, wires, things of that nature. Uh, that went up about $3.9 million to uh, $67.9 million as of April 30th. On the liability side, uh, debt was up a couple of million dollars, so about $36.6 million. And um, as far as the net income goes or the income statement, just a couple items there. Operating revenues were $46 million, which was up about $300,000 from 2012. Uh, most everything else in line with the prior year, all that resulted in a net margin or a net income of $4,660,735. So uh, a sound financial report from us. Uh, the cooperative is in very good financial condition. If anybody has any questions, I'd be happy to try to answer them at this time. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Ed. Appreciate that. Okay, now it's my great pleasure to introduce my co-worker and good friend, Les Moreland, who is uh, serving as our interim CEO. Uh, Les has been with our cooperative now about eight, eight and a half years, and uh, has previously served as our chief financial officer, and under his leadership, uh, Wiregrass Electric Cooperative, as you've just heard, is certainly financially sound and really some of the best financial conditions in our history. Les, tell us about Wiregrass Electric. Thank you, Brad. Appreciate the kind words. Uh, Tiffany, if you'll switch to the first slide. This year's annual report was titled Hometown Heroes. The purpose is to inform our members about the efforts that Wiregrass Electric employees put forth every day to, to improve life across the Wiregrass. The report touched on a lot of different facets of our cooperative family and what we have accomplished over the last year. We chose Hometown Heroes because we believe that our employees deserve recognition for all that they do each day to make our community a better place. Next slide. Wiregrass Electric is a cooperative. This means we adhere to a core set of values that separate us from most other companies our members come in contact with. Cooperatives are also a special place to work because instead of improving profit, cooperatives focus on improving lives. We believe the employees here are the cooperative family and should be treated as such. We're here to provide the best possible member service, and the men and women of our cooperative are some of the best people in the cooperative utility business. We value our members, and we value the dedicated, well-trained, motivated men and women that work hard each day to provide the electric service our members deserve. As part of our theme, I'm gonna call attention to a few of our hometown heroes in the course of this slide. Um, go back. Pictured here is Bill Cobb. Bill, stand up. Y'all take a look. Wave at us, Bill. Everybody knows Bill? In 1965, a young 20-year-old came to work at Wiregrass Electric. That was 48 years ago. Back in those days, they free climbed the poles. There was no bucket trucks. Uh, Bill was telling Brad now the other day the story of when he and Clyde Smith had to climb a pole that they were going to replace. It was secured by the line truck in place. And while they were at the top of the pole in about 1968, the pole snapped. Bill fell 35 feet to the ground and broke his neck. He was in the hospital for months. Uh, it, it calls attention to me to how far we've come because now we have very uh, safe, well-equipped bucket trucks that eliminate those kinds of risk. But Bill did come back to work a few months later, and I think, Bill, I heard they paid you $17 a week workers' comp while you were out, isn't that right? <laughs> yeah. And to his best recollection in our records, has gone almost 40 years without another lost time accident. So we're very proud of Bill and uh, the great job that he does. The, the thing that that I hear the most from the guys that are monitoring our system after hours is if there's an outage, they hope it's in Bill's territory because he's got his phone with him all the time. He's always ready to go, 
and he rushes out to restore power quickly. So, Bill, you're what makes this place great. Thank you, buddy. <laughs> Safety, being part of the Wiregrass Electric family is being safe at all times. By nature, working with electricity can be a hazardous job, but it doesn't have to be a dangerous job because our employees focus on safety before anything else. By August of this year, Wiregrass Electric employees have logged more than 300,000 hours without a single lost time accident. This marked the second year in a row we finished accident free. Safety is number one at Wiregrass Electric Cooperative. Our, co our cooperative will not compromise the safety of our employees or our members for any reason. As, as part of that, I want to recognize another uh, hometown hero. Nathan, stand up and wave at us. Nathan's been with us 22 years. He started out as a laborer, worked his way up through the crew, crew foreman, and so forth. And then during the last two years, He's, he's been going back and forth to Madison, Wisconsin, and Nathan is one of two people in the state of Alabama that is a certified loss control professional, CLCP. He works with our guys every month and throughout the month trying to drill and train on safety. We place a high value on that, and I've got just a few comments from the heart for our board and our members and our employees. When it's raining outside and the, and, and the lines are down or the lights are off, think about the guys that are going out when it's still raining. And the most important thing we can all do is, is pray for them to be protected. You know, uh, we have God's favor here because we honor God. And I pray every day and I would ask you to pray every day to keep our men safe because they get out to get your power going again. We want a safety culture here. We don't want a safety program. You know, we want our men to embrace safety and hold one another accountable because we love one another and because we're a family. And we take a common sense approach. It's not all about the rules. It's, it's about doing the smart things and the common sense things. Strength, Tiffany, next one. As a cooperative, Wiregrass Electric Cooperative has never been stronger. Each year we receive a report called the Key Ratio Trend Analysis, which show the operating numbers for our brother and sister.